Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Fast Forward 2 by Audio Damage. It's a souped up Alpha Centauri clone, meaning it does additive synthesis. And if you're wondering what that is, well, it basically means you're adding stuff to make your sounds. And if you don't get it, then don't worry, I'll explain how that works. Phosphor 2 was specifically designed as an audio unit extension, but you can still load it in standalone mode, only you don't have interrupt audio or any of that kind of stuff. There is some basic MIDI settings, but that's all you get. You get the best use out of it when loading it inside a DAW that supports audio unit extensions, like I've done right here with Cubasis. Now stick with me because I'm going to take you through all of the features inside this synthesizer. But before we do that, just a little bit of background history regarding the Alpha Centauri synthesizer. You see, the Alpha Centauri released in 1979, the best year ever, because I was born then, so that, that's why it was the best. N never mind. The Alpha Centauri was one of the first affordable digital synthesizers. This was long before software plugins and anything like that way before that. It was basically using an Apple microcomputer as a processing unit. Now it was working with additive synthesis, so the oscillators were producing sounds using several sine waves, each with their own frequency, to produce different waveforms, and I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. Now Audio Damage hasn't just emulated the Centauri, no, they've actually added a few things to the formula. <laughs> So everything within the synthesizer can be found inside two pages and you find the menu up here. So here you can switch between the oscillator section and the modulation section and we're going to go through all of it. Now we are going to spend some time with the two oscillators here, but I want to begin by showing you the regular stuff. So we're going to begin up here. I've already showed you the menu. Next you can find the preset system where you can save your own stuff, but you actually have to tap and go into the user directory in order to see the saving and delete options. Now Phosphor 2 does contain presets, but there's not many of them. But there are a few and if you play around with them, you'll get a basic idea on how this synthesizer sounds. Next to the preset list, we have something called L plus R link. Now when we activate that, everything we do in the primary oscillator will be duplicated down here in the secondary oscillator, except from this window here. So if I pull the release of the envelope, then you can see that it's getting mirrored down here. If I pull here, then you can see it's getting mirrored down here. But if I do anything, in the secondary oscillator, then nothing will happen to the primary oscillator. Next to the link option, we have something called randomize iPad, and it's basically just a randomization function for the synthesizer. So if I press it, everything gets randomized. Next to the randomization option, we have something called mod wheel destination. So through this list, you can choose to send your modulation wheel data to LFO1, LFO2 or LFO1 and 2. Next we have the keyboard modes, poly, mono and retrig. And after that, we have the main volume output. Now if we jump down here, we can see that we have something called Oscillator 1 cross mode. We can also find the same thing down here, Oscillator 2 cross mode. You can basically use each of the oscillators to modulate each other. It's basically like FM synthesis. You're using one frequency to modulate another. Next we can find a panning mode. After that we have the Oscillator volume output. Next we have the volume level control for the noise generator and also a velocity setting. Now each of the sliders can be reset by double tapping. Both oscillators work the same way, so there's no need to explain these. But the second oscillator actually has one control that the primary oscillator doesn't. It's called pitch offset. And this will detune the secondary oscillator from the main oscillator in pitch. Thank you. 
Now settings like the panning, the amplification or volume output, noise level and pitch for each oscillators can be modulated inside the modulation window right here. And for this you have two LFOs. To actually modulate those settings you use these sliders right here. As you can see these are the modulation options for the primary oscillator and these ones for the secondary oscillator. So these are basically strength settings. So if I wanted to modulate the volume output for the primary oscillator using LFO2, then, then I go up here to the primary oscillator, look at the sliders for LFO2 and simply drag the amp slider to where I want it. And this way I am now modulating the volume output for the primary oscillator using LFO2. Heading back to the oscillator menu and looking right here in the middle, we have two envelopes, one for each of the oscillators. And I really like these envelopes because they allow you to actually shape the release, the decay and also the attack. So you can get some really interesting envelope shapes. Now I'm dying to explain to you how Phosphor 2 produces its sound and the way you can manipulate it using this window. But before that, I just want to go to the modulation window again Again, and I just want to mention that you have two delays, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. Both of the delays have a filter and they've both got controls for feedback, cross feedback. They can both be modulated with LFO 1 and 2. And if you're tweaking around with these and you can't hear them, it's most likely because you got the delay mix turned all the way down. Lastly, there's also a portamento setting. And if you can't hear what that does, it's probably because you're using the synthesizer in keyboard poly mode. Just switch it over to either mono or retrig, and you'll start hearing the portamento. 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 There are only sine waves inside Phosphor 2, but with the sine waves we can produce other waveforms. So to really demo this, we first need to do one thing. If you look over here, we can see three different options. One says clear, and this one will basically clear whatever you've done inside this window, like that. Next we have a control mode, and here we can set the amount of partials, basically sine waves, that we want to use to sculpt our sound. Oh, and these little uh, space invader alien looking kind of things here? Well, you can find them there and there inside the oscillators, and you can also find them over there and there. These are the vintage switches, and when you turn them on, well, you get a little bit more grit and dirt in your sounds. Right now we're using 64 partials, but we're gonna set this down to 16 partials. And here you can see them from 1 to 16. I also want to make sure that we can only hear oscillator 1. And I'm going to turn this up just a little bit like that. So if I play this now with all the partials pulled down, we won't hear any sound. Now listen what happens when I pull up the first partial. Phosphor 2 is now producing a clean sine waveform without any harmonics added to it. Now listen what happens when I pull up this partial. Now we're starting to add harmonics to our sound. And if I pull this one down again, We can hear that this is also just a sine waveform. And this is how additive synthesis works. Now if we go back into the control menu, then we can see that we have more options here. Two different random modes, and then we have three waveform modes. So, if we choose the sawtooth, Phosphor 2 is now producing something that sounds like a sawtooth. And if we choose a triangle, 
we get more of a triangular waveform. And the last one is a square waveform. Now this becomes even more interesting when we're using one oscillator to modulate another. So for this demonstration, I'm first going to clear everything and then pull up the first partial again. Let's add this one too. Now we're going to go to the secondary oscillator and we're going to clear this window. Then we're going to go into control and choose 16 partials. Let's pull up the level for oscillator 2, pull down on the level for oscillator 1. Let's pull down the level here again and pull up oscillator 1 again. Now listen closely what happens when I play this and turn up the cross modulation here. What's happening is we are basically using the frequencies that the secondary oscillator is producing to modulate the frequencies in the primary oscillator. It does sound like FM synthesis, doesn't it? Now it gets even more interesting when we start using envelopes. Let's make sure we can only hear the second oscillator. And now let's make this sound short. So we're going to pull the sustain down and we're also going to tweak down the decay. Now let's make sure we can only hear oscillator 1 and let's pull down on the cross modulation and again listen what happens when I'm adding cross modulation from the secondary oscillator. It is now producing somewhat of a clicky sound. Let's make this even more interesting. Let's pull up the sustain for the primary oscillator and let's fiddle with the envelope on the secondary oscillator while playing. And this is how you sculpt your sound inside Phosphor 2. Just listen to this bass sound I made. Now we've only been experimenting with 16 partials here. Don't forget that you can actually use up to 64 partials, meaning you can get some really high frequency sine waves in there. I do recommend Phosphor 2 and I really do like what the guys over at Audio Damage has done. It's more than just an Alpha Centauri clone. I put an app link down in the description so you can go grab Phosphor 2 for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I've also got a uh, Patreon. Pa Patreon? Ah. Oh.
I've also got a Patreon page, so if you want to support creativity, good content and great reviews like this one, then why not sign up on Patreon? Now, if Patreon isn't your cup of tea, then I've also got a PayPal me link, so you can do a one-off, uh, one-off, don't, don't, so you can do a one-off donation if you'd rather do that. Now, if you don't want to do Patreon or PayPal, then when you want to buy an app, why not look in the video descriptions of my videos? Because when you buy an app through one of my links, as an Apple affiliate, I do earn a small percentage of what you pay for that app. So it's also a great way of supporting me and what I do here. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, then you can always share my videos, press the thumbs up because that really helps with the ratings around here. Comment away down in the comment section. And if you subscribe, don't forget to press in that little bell thing because that way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Oh, come on, Jacob. Ah. Uh.